You wanna see something cool? Okay, look, that's just pure badass, isn't it? Hello, my fellow hunters, and welcome today as we delve deep into all that is the Burning Zero Dragon. An unparalleled master of two elements and one mighty foe. This is Eruzerion! Who also has a fan fantastic singing voice. Anyway then, this very mysterious, enigmatic Elder Dragon was introduced fairly late into Frontier. In Frontier Z, to be more precise, and he is, uh, well, unlike anything that has come before or since. The idea of multi-elemental monsters is a fascinating one, realized fully in the form of Latrion in his latest incarnation, but on a small a scale with different mixes, I feel like there is so much potential to be tapped here. And yes, let's get this out of the way. Good, have we have we got that out of our systems? Fantastic. It's, I mean, it is it is kind of uncanny, actually, isn't it? So this then, fire and ice, a classic pairing, rivals combined, opposing forces working as one. It is well, undoubtedly cool and hot. So, uh, Eruzerion then, there is actually very little known about him. Even his discovery was essentially a complete accident. Where he lives, how he lives, what he does in his spare time, what kind of films he enjoys, all of it is a complete mystery. He was discovered at the top of the tower, a massive construction of the ancient civilization whose very mortar was constructed from, well, Elder Dragon material turned to paste, a monument to a once mighty nation's pride and, ultimately, arrogance. In any case, a research team encountered one at the top of said tower. Teams would often be sent by the guild to routinely scour these ancient civilization ruins for any technology, any carvings, any materials, anything that could be of use in current day monster hunting, anything that could help avoid mistakes of the past and maintain balance. And well, one of these teams had a fateful encounter of the burning freezing kind. Eruzerion then, despite being more of a frame akin to Zenoga, Flightless and Fanged Wyverny was given the title Elder Dragon due to the sheer overwhelming power it possesses and the sheer, well, uniqueness of its hot and cold existence. And this is really awesome to see because I think there is lots of room to explore in the Elder Dragon space when considering not the classic, you know, four legs, two wings, dragony form, Teostra esque setup. You can definitely go with Elder Dragons of other non-Elder Dragon skeletons, such as Amatsu being obviously Leviathan in nature, but still Elder Dragon. When a monster is both mysterious and powerful enough, well, that is enough to qualify it in to that legendary category, and Eruzerion is most certainly that. So how does it do what it does? Well, visually, it is quite striking. The contrasting, conflicting fur of brightest blue and deepest orange. The lines of glowing power surrounding his eyes. The horns twisted and magnificent and seething with each respective element are ah, one hell of an impressive sight. His visage is not one oft forgot in a hurry. But, truthfully, this, well, is a little bit of a lie. See, he isn't truly blue and orange, he is actually just grey. A very simple, dark, grey monster. Washed out whites and blacks, his scales, and, well, quite dull is his true nature. Well, that's, that's just... That's just really mean! Calm down now, brown cow. I- <laughs> What was that?! Calm down now, brown cow! Is that an actual expression? Calm down now, brown cow. 
Oh, no, it's how now, brown cow? A saying that apparently originated as a way of calling another round of drinks. Well, there you go. Don't tell me that these lovely law videos aren't informative. <laughs> So, Erizarion then, his body is where it's at, if you know what I mean. Because inside of it is, well, three key components that lead to how he be. He has a massive, throbbing, overworked, large and powerful frost sack on his right side. He has a massive, throbbing, large, powerful and overworked flame sack on his left side. They are what fuels him, what funnels his essence, but both are powered by a crystalline gem-like object that grows within him, much like the gems we regularly carve, incredibly rare, incredibly pretty, and made of pure bioenergy shining in his depths. In any case, these three are connected through his very body, his flesh, his nervous system, how he be in a trifecta of constantly being produced overwhelming elemental energy, and that is channeled through his horns. The frost horn is hardened, ice, rock, and difficult to break. The flame horn is burning to the touch, a deadly weapon, yet softer and more malleable and more easily shattered. Both can be broken, and both do a number on his ability to control himself. But when fully online, fully powered, fully iced, and fully flamed, the volley, breadth, and depth of the attacks, combinations, and blasts that Erezerion can send your way is, well, completely awe-inspiring. He can use the ice individually in all the ways you might imagine. Big, great boulders of it, blasts of it, shards of it, freezing hunters solid to the ground in, well, a tomb of their own folly, waiting for that final execution. The fire, again, individually used in all the ways you might imagine. Explosion, flamethrowers, balls of death in general. Oh my god, I'm melting, being applied to all of the living things in his vicinity. But it is when they combine in beautiful symphony, in chorus, in tandem, when they weave in and out, yin and yang, echoing each other, covering each other's weaknesses, and twisting like serpents as they dive towards their prey. That is when truly he shines, and it is one of the most potent, unstoppable onslaughts in all of the Monster Hunter world. Indeed, the more difficult version of Erezerion, which we will get to, is considered the single hardest challenge that there ever was in Frontier. A game full of ridiculous, hard challenges. It truly is something that can only be described as... DAMN! And that, honestly, is fantastic. My personal opinion on how he looks is quite mixed. I think the idea of such a brightly blue and orange half and half is a little bit almost artificial, a little bit too uh, bossy, but at the same time, I can't deny that he looks really quite sweet, and I think the idea is phenomenal, and I think he has a lot of potential, and certainly I could see him being done in the main game. He is Elder Dragon in proportion, and given we have a Latron doing all five, yeah, I could see this working. I definitely don't think there's anything I can literally point to and go, oh, that's a bit... It's a bit ugly, it's, it's a bit... Uh, a monster could totally have double elemental sex. It might not be on a base species, you might have to do it on a variant or a mutation or a deviant, but even then, the idea of that double actually naturally occurring is quite, well, plausible. In nature, all the time, we have, well, genetic defects that manifest in a whole array of different ways. Largely, they're detrimental, but even a just two-headed snake, you know, is like, oh, okay, jeez, all right, bloody hell. So, double elemental sacked monster is definitely up there. And it's not like it's purely a benefit. See, much like Todoroki, Erosarion must be careful of not overusing one or the two sides, as it can quickly overcome him. He can end up burning himself out quite literally, or freezing himself to death on the other hand. 
the idea that if you were to exert yourself a little bit too much, you might be your own unmaking is quite an interesting one and requires every Erosarion to really master itself, control of itself, to learn its abilities. And as such, despite not knowing where they fit into the ecosystem, what they hunt, where they live, you can imagine that rearing the young is quite the difficult task. And like many monsters in baby form, they are likely quite capable of getting things wrong and well, sadly, ending themselves prematurely. Now, you can, as a hunter during the fight, shut down one of its elemental sides. Enough damage, enough focus, enough pressure, it will lose control, and the scales and fur will turn grey, returning to their original colour, and it can no longer use that element, which is a very fun little mechanic to be working with. The idea of shutting a monster down is nothing new or crazy, but in this case, it's very represented, very visceral, and just kind of makes intuitive sense. And this is where his true colour is revealed, for his icy side chills his scales. His scales are incredibly flexible, yet durable and hard, and they react to temperature. You know, like those uh, like novelty t-shirts you get, where you can put your hand on and then they leave a print because your hand's warm and it, and it reacts uh, with the way that it died and, uh, well, changes colour. Imagine all of his scales are like that, so the cold side, well, the hues in blue, whereas heating up his scales on the other, turns him to orange. The same with his fur, which is a reason why I kind of let the colour get a pass, because it's not truly his colour, and we've seen much, well, as vibrant animals in real life, so that kind of pure saturation is certainly nothing out of the ordinary or crazy, and it being a, a symptom of how his own scales react to temperature is a really nice take on displaying what this elder dragon can do. And he is considered quite intelligent, largely because of how, well, yeah, difficult it is to properly utilize his own strengths. He is fairly aggressive and definitely is all for defending his territory, as many Elder Dragons uh, tend to be. He only, well, showed up at the very highest point of the tower, where only the most competent and powerful of monsters tend to be drawn. And that is very evident with just how much oomph he has at his disposal. And for some closing thoughts on at least base Erezerion, I will admit that I love uh, that his horns do have the twist akin to Ram's, as Ram is the patron animal of Ares, and Ares is my star sign, and I really love the god of war, Ares, and there you go, that's a little, a little tidbit for you. I don't know if that was actually useful to you in any way, but uh, I, uh, I hope you... You enjoyed hearing it. So, let's move on then to burning, freezing Erosarion, his uh, extreme individual version. I feel like giving him the title now of burning, freezing is perhaps a little bit unnecessary, given that he already essentially is burning, freezing, but that is uh, completely okay. But what is not okay is facing this creature. Extreme individuals are just that, extreme. They are uh, basically event monsters that are amped up, and they are unbelievably strong. They look slightly different, and they are basically, well, peerless in uh, their terrifying nature. And as you can see, he is definitely, well, just that, more intense. Basically, it's everything that the original is, but turned up to 11. The fire, more furious. The ice, more treacherous. And so on and so forth. And it makes him... <laughs> Ooh, and you know that that noise does not get brought out very often. Essentially, he gains the ability to not just put Fire Blight and Ice Blight on you, but Extreme Fire Blight and Extreme Ice Blight. And Extreme Blights in Frontier are no joke. And indeed, Extreme Ice Blight, while doing the same stamina draining function, if you hit zero stamina, you will just be frozen solid as your reward. 
And then when it comes to the Fire Blight place, so well, uh, you uh, get your uh, HP drained by the fire, but also your maximum HP. So the total you can be at also starts to burn down, meaning if you don't get rid of this quickly, you are going to put yourself in one hittable territory until you then get one hit or restore your total health very quickly. So there you go, everybody. That is uh, Eruzerion, uh, the, uh, well, fire, the ice, the hot, the cold, the burning zero dragon. Let me know what you guys think of him. I certainly think he has potential, and I uh, would like to see him, well, be a little bit reimagined. Because while I think suddenly plausible, I think perhaps toned down just a little bit, but on concept alone, I do want there to be more multi-elemental monsters in the series. Two or three, same with statuses, I think there is a lot of fun to be had there. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. It is truly what keeps us going, and without you guys, well, we would not be here. I will see you next time. A good one. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.